<sighs> Welcome back. You guys ready for some more Ace Sprite tips? Let's get to it. So, here we have Dwerve. And a very important thing I need to show you guys is up here there's a horizontal symmetry and a vertical symmetry tool. And man, this thing is nice. So basically, what you can do with this is anything you draw on the left appears on the right. So we can give Dwarf some swirly cheeks and look at that, he's so cute. And um, you, can, you can move this around to wherever you want. And of course you can have uh, even two of them. Oh my God, look at this, we can draw a mandala. Okay, next tip. If you're using the paint bucket tool, which doesn't look like a paint bucket, it looks like a drop. But, um, and you, for example, want to color all of one color, Let's say we wanted Dwerve here to have super red cheeks, right? So if you wanted both, all the colors to change, up here, contiguous, you can turn it off and now check it out. Bada bing, bada boom, he's got red cheeks. So let's say we wanted to change the colors of this glove, boom. But you gotta be careful where you use this color because what if that was also in his hair? <laughs> it would change his hair color as well. So if you have the paint bucket tool selected and you pick a color, it's going to fill that color. But if you make your tolerance really high, then all the colors that are of similar hues will also change. And bada bing bada boom, Dwarf is super saiyan. All right, so you've been drawing, now you wanna save or export. Let me show you how to do that real quick. You go here and when you click save as, the file that you choose on the bottom is very important. So let me go over these file formats really quick. A sprite file is going to keep all the layer information for you and you can open up this file and continue drawing as you were drawing. The only other um, file formats that you should probably do is PNG. So what PNG does is if I turn this background off, it's transparent, right? And for video games, you're going to want the background to be transparent. That's when you're going to save the image as a PNG file. That's when you want transparency. And then JPEG files, JPEG files are usually a little bit smaller but they don't have transparency. So this transparent background here would actually become white. The JPEG file format, if it has a very high compression on it, can make your artwork look blurry and it'll actually lose some of that pixel information. So you probably always wanna save a PNG if you're doing pixel art. If you wanna post your image on social media or Twitter and stuff like that, you're gonna not wanna to go to save as, you're gonna to wanna to go to export. Because here, what you can do is resize it. Usually pixel art is tiny. So I go to like a thousand percent increase when I want to post it on the web. On the web. Speaking about the web, I got a website. So I'm one of the developers working on Dwerve. It's a tower defense dungeon crawler. We're going to be doing Kickstarter pretty soon. So it'd be awesome if you subscribe to the newsletter. By the way, it's already on Steam, um, but you can only wishlist it but please wishlist it because it'll let us know how big the hype yeah. is. <laughs> now you know who this is. It's Dwerve the Dwarf, our main character. This next tip is super important, okay? Okay. Go to edit and, and go to keyboard shortcuts. And here, set keyboard shortcuts. Everyone is lazy and they don't set keyboard shortcuts, but you should, you should. <laughs> Here's why. You can work so much quicker if you set keyboard shortcuts. Take a look down here. I'm basically pretending I'm playing League of Legends and I got QWER. Super quick tip, if you want your artwork to have an outline, you can go to Effects, Outline. And here, you can choose what direction the outlines come from or all directions. Pretty neat. This is actually pretty dope if you do font in a sprite. I wouldn't recommend doing font. How you do font is you go to Edit, Insert Text. Yeah, it's not a tool. You have to go to edit, insert text. And here we're just gonna say Dwerve. Okay, so here we have our text. And now if you go to edit, effects, outline, you can make the text look a little bit 3D. Check this out. You can choose maybe just to have it from, from the bottom. Isn't that cool? And you can start making a cool font. Um, with Alt, I don't know if I set this as a hockey, but with Alt, I'm pretty sure it's the default eyedropper tool. So I can eyedrop this blue and then just go to a color that's a little bit higher, press F, boom, I and, and color that in. That was a terrible color. Whatever, the point is, there's no point. If you accidentally make a selection that you didn't want, you can press Control D, and that'll deselect it. Another quick tip is you can press spacebar 
to drag your artwork around. So I just sit my fat thumb on that space bar. You got to keep it held down. And then for zooming in and zooming out, I love to use control plus and control minus. This is what it was for me in Photoshop and Flash. So I love to set that as my zoom in and zoom out hotkeys. By the way, you can export your hotkey settings and import hotkey settings. So you should have all the same hotkey settings in all the programs that you use. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community. There are a ton of things for you to learn like a sprite you can dive a little bit deeper into a sprite than my videos go if you sign up using my referral link you get two months free the first thousand people are gonna get two months free of skillshare heck yeah you. they also have tutorials for programs that i'm not gonna cover like if you use piscal they have tutorials here for that as well almost any pixel art program is here <laughs> let's check out pixel edit yup there we go pixel edit this, whoops, it's not spelled pixel edit like that. Yep, see, they got pixel edit tutorials. So pretty much for every single program, they're gonna cover it. A great thing about Skillshare is that after the trial, it's only like $10 a month. So you don't have to take it too serious. You can kind of take your time. You know what I mean? It's not like you're signed up to a college course or something. Okay, back to the tips. So let's say I wanted to do a pattern for this background here, right? I'm just going to turn on my symmetry tool and I'm going to do some Celtic, uh, some Celtic cool little pattern here or something like that. So now we're just going to go ahead and select this um, with the selection tool, which you should have hotkey by the way. And here we can go to edit, new brush. And we just created a new brush and check this out. What? What's going on? So you can just paint now and it'll auto connect. You see that? It's like auto tiling. So these brackets right here, they're changing the hue for me. Check it out. I can I can change the, the hue. Isn't that awesome? And that looks pretty snazzy. is it? Oh my god, I didn't fix my camera. <laughs> Oops. So as you make new brushes, they're going to get added to a drop down. Let me just show you real quick. Right here, up at the top, now I can select the brush that I want. So for example, if I wanna use this brush, or this brush, or just go back to having a circle. When you switch to the circle and at the top here, you can use the scroll wheel to quickly change the size of your circle. So some, some super quick color tips, which by the way, I have a color palette video in my pixel art playlist. If you're here watching this, you should check out my entire playlist. Honestly, it's going to help you a ton. But for the colors um, here in the bottom left, what I have set up here is my personal preference. It's how I like to get to colors. But what you can do is you can click the options here. And if you, for example, like the color wheel, you can switch that to the color wheel. If you, for example, like, um, I don't know, whatever. I like tint and shade. What you can do is you can click the foreground color here, but up here, make sure that you're on HSV. The reason why HSV is so important is because it has all the stuff that you need. If you're gonna buy a Sprite, please use the link in the description. I'm probably gonna pin it at the top of the comments because if you buy it through Humble, I'm, I get a tiny, tiny kickback. I'm not sponsored by, by a Sprite, but at least Humble has a partner program. So I get a, t a tiny bit of money. In the description, I'm also giving away free pixel art assets that you can use in your games. Some of them even have a Sprite files. Shout out to my followers. You get notified whenever I update the Sprite pack. So it's a great reason to follow me. Also, I'm uploading indie games up there when I do game jams and stuff like that. If you're into pixel art or game development, you should be following me on Twitter. I reply back and give people feedback. Panic Pop is my clothing line. And if you're still watching, man, you're the real fan. So I'm gonna give you the opportunity to get an A Sprite key. That's right. Under the comment that I pin, guess a number between one and 100, and you might get an A Sprite key. Just shh, don't tell nobody. Dev life. Subscribe. <laughs> Please subscribe. Please subscribe.